Welcome to this CUBE conversation sponsored by Citrix. This is the in third and final installment in the Citrix Launchpad series. We're going to be talking about the Launchpad series for work. Lisa Martin here with Dion Hinchcliffe, VP and Principal Analyst at Constellation Research. Dion, welcome to the program. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Great to be here. So we have seen a tremendous amount of change in the last 18, 19 months. You know, we saw this massive scatter to work from home a year and a half ago. Now we're in this sort of distributed environment that's been persisting for a long time. Talk to me about, we're going to be talking about some of the things that Citrix is seeing and some of the things that they're doing to help individuals and teams. But give me your lens from Constellation's perspective. What are some of the major challenges with this distributed environment that you've seen? Sure, well, so we've gone from this, uh, you know, the, the the world of work, the way that it was, now we're all very decentralized, you know, work from anywhere, remote work is uh, really dominating, you know, you know, uh, you know white collar types of activities uh, in the workplace uh, and in the workplaces that are homes for, for, for most of us even today. Uh, but that's starting to change. Some people are going back, although I, I just recently spoke to a panel of CIOs that says they have no plans anytime soon uh, but they're, they're they're very aware that they need to have workable plans for when uh, we start sending people back to the office. And there's this big divide. Uh, how are we going to make sure that we have one common culture, we have a collaborative organization when, uh, you know, a good percentage of our workers are in the office, but also maybe as much as half the organization is at home. And so uh, how to make processes seamless, how to how to make people collaborate, make sure there's, there's equity and inclusion so that the people at home aren't left out and the people uh, in the office maybe you don't, uh, don't have an unfair advantage. So those are all the conversations. Uh, and of course, because this is a technology revolution, remote work was enabled by technology. Uh, we're really looking at it again for this hybrid work, this, you know, this, this divided organization that we're going to have. You mentioned culture, that's incredibly important, but also challenging to do with this distribution. I was looking at some research that Citrix provided, asking individuals from a productivity perspective, for, and, and two thirds said, hey, for our organizations that have given us more tools for collaboration and communication, yes, we are absolutely more productive. But the kicker is the same amount of people, about two thirds that answered this survey said, we've now got about 10 tools. So complexity is more challenging. Um, it's harder to work individually, it's harder to work in teams. And so Citrix is really coming to the table here with the Launchpad series for work saying, let's help these individuals and these teams, because as we we think, and I'm sure you have insight, Diane, on this as well, this hybrid model that we're starting to see emerge is going to be persistent for a while. Yeah, for the foreseeable future, because we don't know what the future holds. So that it, we'll have to hold the hybrid model as the primary model, and, and we may eventually go back to the way that we were, but for the next several years, it's going to be that. And so we're trying to wrap our arms around that. And, and I think that we're seeing with things like the Citrix announcements, uh, a wave of responses saying, all right, let's really design properly for these changes. You know, we, we kind of just adapted quickly when everyone went remote last year, uh, but now we're actually adding features to, to streamline, to reduce the friction, to simplify remote work, which does use, you have to use more applications. You have to switch between different things. You have to, uh, you know, your, your employee experience in the digital world is just more cluttered and complicated, but it doesn't have to be. And so I, I you know, I will, we can look to, to some of these announcements that will actually, I think, address some of that. Let's break some of that down because to your point, it it doesn't have to be complex, complicated. It shouldn't be. And initially this scatter was, let's do everything we can to ensure that our teams right. and our people can be productive, can communicate, can collaborate. And now, since this is going to be persistent for quite some time, to your point, let's design for this distributed environment, this hybrid workforce of the future. Talk to me about the one of the things that Citrix is doing with Citrix Workspace, the app personalization. I can imagine as an individual contributor, but also as a team leader, the ability to customize this to the way that I work best is critical. Uh, and it really is, especially when you know you, you have workers, you know, uh, 18 or 19 months worth of new hires that you've never met. They don't really feel like you know this is maybe their organization. But if you allow them to shape it a little bit, make it contextual for them, so they don't just come into this cookie cutter digital experience that actually is kind of more meaningful for them and makes it easier for them to get their job done. And, they, you know, and things are the way where the way that they want them and where they want them. I think that makes a lot of sense. And so uh, the app personalization announcements is is important for remote workers in particular, but all workers to say, hey, can I start tailoring? you know, parts of my employee experience, so they make more sense for me, and I feel like I belong a little bit more. So I, I, I think it's significant. 
It is. Let's talk about it from a security perspective, though. We've seen massive changes in the security landscape in the last year and a half. We've seen some Citrix uh, data that I was looking at said between 2019 and 2020, ransomware up 435 percent, malware up 358 percent, and of course, the weakest link being humans. Talk to me from a Citrix workspace perspective about some of the things that they've done to ensure that those security policies can be applied. Well, and the part that I really liked about uh, the, the launchpad announcements around work uh, in terms of security was this much more intelligent analysis. Uh, you know, one of the most frustrating things is you're trying to get work done remotely and maybe you're, you're in crunch mode and all of a sudden the security system clamps down because they think they're, you think know, you're, you're doing something that you, know, you might be sharing information you shouldn't be and now you can't, you can't get your deadline met. Uh, I really liked how the the, the 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 analytics inside the new security features really trying to make sure they're applying intelligent analysis of behavior, and only when it's clear that a bad actor is in there doing something, then they can restrict access, protect information, uh, and so uh, I, and I have no doubt they'll continue to evolve um, uh, the, the the product so that it's even even more uh, effective in terms of how it can include or exclude um, bad actors from from doing things inside your system, and so. Uh, the, uh, this is the kind of intelligent security, uh, increasingly based on AI type technologies that I think that'll keep our workers productive, but clamp down on the much higher rate of, of uh, bad activity we see out there because we do have so many more endpoints. There's a thousand more times more endpoints in uh, today's organizations because of remote work. Right, and one of the things that we've seen with ransomware, I mentioned those numbers that Citrix was sharing, it's gotten so much more personalized. So it's harder and harder to catch these things. One of the things that I found interesting, Dion, that from a secure collaboration perspective that Citrix is saying is that, you know, we need to go, security needs to go beyond the devices uh, and the endpoints and the apps that an employee is using, which of which we said there are at least 10 apps that are being used today. And it needs to actually be applied at the content level, the, the, the content creation level. Talk to me about your thoughts about that. I think that's exactly right. So if, um, you know the profile of that worker and the types of things that they normally do, and you see unusual behavior that is uncharacteristic of that worker because you know their patterns, the types of content, the locations of that content uh, that they might normally have access to. And if they're just accessing things, uh, you know, uh, 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 periodically, uh, that's usually not a problem. But when they suddenly access a large volume of information and appear to be downloading, those are those are the types of issues, and especially of content they don't normally use for their work. Um, then you can then you can you can um, you can intervene and take more intelligent actions as opposed to just uh, trying to limit all content, for example, so that knowledge workers can't actually get access to all that great information in your IT systems. Um, you can now give them access to it, but when clearly something something bad is happening, you, the system automatically does it and steps in. I was looking at some of the data with respect to updates to Citrix Analytics that. It can now auto change permissions on shared files to read only. I think you alluded to this earlier when yes. it detects that excess sharing is going on. Well, and, and inappropriate access sharing. So sometimes it's okay for a worker to access uh, uh, you know, documents, but the big fear is that uh, a bad actor gets access, they get a USB key or, and they download a bunch of files and they get a whole bunch of IP or important knowledge. Well, when you have a system that's continually monitoring, you know, the unblinking gaze of of uh, Citrix security capabilities are looking uh, at, at the patterns, not just the content uh, alone or just the device alone, but at the at the usage patterns and saying, I can make this read only because that's clearly, it, it, um, you know, we, we don't want them to be able to download this because this activity is completely out of bounds or very unusual. Right. Uh, one of the things also that Citrix is doing is integrating with Microsoft Teams. I was listening to a, a fun uh, quiz show the other day that said, what were the top two apps downloaded in 2020, and I guess one of them correctly, TikTok, though I still don't know how to use it, and the second one was Zoom, and I'm sure Microsoft Teams is way up there. I was looking at some stats that said, I think as of the spring of 2020, there were 145 million daily users of Microsoft Teams. So that, from a collaboration perspective, something that a lot of folks are dependent on during the pandemic. And now within Teams, I can access Microsoft Workspace? Yeah. So, I, Citrix Workspace. Yes, well, and, and it's more significant than it sounds because there's a real hunger to find a center of gravity for the employee experience. Where do I put that? Where should they be spending most of their time? Where should I be training them to focus most of their attention? And obviously workers collaborate a lot and Teams uh, as part of Office 365 is just a juggernaut. You know, the rise of it during the, the pandemic has been incredible. 
uh, you know, just to, sh to, end it, to show this, uh, I have a digital workplace advisory board. It's uh, companies who I think are, are, are the farthest along in, uh, in designing digital employee experiences. And 31% of them said this January that they're planning on centralizing the employee experience in Teams. Now, if you're a Citrix customer, uh, you have workspace, you go, well, how do I, I don't want to be left out. This announcement allows you to say, you can have the goodness of Teams and its capabilities and the power of Citrix workspace, and you, and you, you have them in one place. Uh, and really creating a true center of gravity and simplifying and streamlining the, the employee experience. You don't have this you know, fragmented pieces. Everything's right there in one place in one pane of glass. And so I like this announcement. Uh, uh, it brings uh, Citrix up to parity with a lot of their competitors uh, and, 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 and actually eclipses several of them as well. So I, I really like to see this. So then from within Teams, I can access Citrix workspace. I can share documents with team members and collaborate as well. Is that kind of the idea? Yes, that is the idea. And, and of course, they'll continue to evolve that. But now you, you can do your work in Citrix workspace. And when, when documents are involved and you want to bring your team in, they're already right there inside that experience. That ability to streamline things, so critical given the fact that we're still in this distributed environment. I'm sure families are still dealing with some, some amount of remote learning or there's still distractions from the do I live at work, or do I work from home environment. One of the one of the groups I, I really felt for when this happened, Diane, was the contact center. I thought these poor people, more people now with, with shorter and shorter fuses trying to get updates on whatever it was that they were, if they had something ordered and of course all the shipping delays. Uh, and the contact center, of course, went phew, scattered as well. And we've got people mm -hmm. working from home, trying to, to do their jobs. Talk to me about some of those things that Citrix is doing to enable, with Google, those contact center workers to have a good experience so that ultimately if the employee experience is good, so is the customer experience. Uh, the uh, contact center worker has it uh, uh, the, the toughest of all of the different employee profiles I've seen. They have the most, they have to learn the most number of applications. Uh, they're typically not um, um, uh, uh, highly skilled workers, so they might only just have a, a you know a high school education. Uh, yet they're being uh, asked to cram all of these technologies, each one with a different uh, employee experience, and they don't stay very long as a result of that. Uh, you might train them for two months before they're effective, and they only stay for six months on average. And so uh, both uh, businesses really want to be able to streamline onboarding and provisioning and getting them set up and effective. Uh, and th they want it too. If you uh, you want happy contact center workers, making your customers happy and staying around, and so the this announcement really allows you to to, to deploy pre-configured um, Citrix workspaces on on Chrome OS, uh, so that uh, you, you know if you need to field a whole bunch of workers, or you have a you know a, you know a, a, you know you have a big let's say you're a um, a relief company and you have a lot of uh, uh, disaster care workers, you can suddenly just issue them these devices very easily that are ready to go with their employee experience and all the right things in place so they can be effective with the least amount of effort. So I think it's a big step forward for a, uh, a worker that is often um, neglected and, and underserved. Right, definitely often neglected. And you, you brought up a good point there. And one of the things that, that peaked in my mind is you talked about you know the onboarding experience, the retention. Well, these contact center folks are the front lines to the customer. So from a brand reputation perspective, that's on the line for companies in every industry where um, people with short fuses are dealing with contact center folks. So the ability to onboard them, to give them a much more seamless experience is critical for the brand reputation, customer retention for every industry, I would imagine. Absolutely, especially when you're setting up a, a, a contact center or uh, you have a new product launching and you want every, you know, you got to bring on board all of these new workers. You can do it and they're going to have the least challenges. They're going to be ready to go right out of the box, be able to, to receive their package with their device and their their Citrix employee experience ready to go, uh, you know, just turn the machine on and and they're off to the races. And, and, that, and that's the vision and that's the right one. And so I, I was glad to see that as well. Yeah, fantastic. One of the things also that Citrix did, the Citrix Workspace app builder, so that Citrix Workspace can now be a system of record for certain things like collaboration, uh, surveys, maybe even COVID-19 information, that system of record. Talk to me about why that's so critical for the distributed worker. So we've had this this long-standing challenge in that uh, we've had our systems of record. You know, these are our CRM systems, ERP, things like that, which we use to run our business. And then we've had our collaboration tools, and and they're and they're separate. Even though we're collaborating on sales deals and we're collaborating on our supply chain, and so like the the, the team's announcement was in the same vein. We can say let's let's close that gap between our systems of record uh, and our collaboration tools. Well, this announcement says 
all right, well, we still have these isolated systems of record. How can we streamline them and build and, and start connecting them together a little bit uh, so that we have processes that might cross all of those things, right? So if an order comes in from the CRM system, then you, you can complete it in the in the ERP system, you know, ordering that product for them so they actually get it. Uh, you know, and it's probably, that's probably overkill, uh, that scenario for this particular example, but for example, uh, collecting data from workers saying, let's, Let's build some forms and, get, and collect some data and then feed it to this process or this system of record. You could do it much more easily than before. Before you would have to hire a development team or a contractor uh, to develop another another system that would integrate you know, uh, you know, CRM or ERP or whatever. Now you can do it very quickly inside App Builder for simple uh, basic applications uh, and get a lot of the low hanging fruit off your plate and more automated inside of your, of your Citrix workspace. And automation has been one of the keys that we've seen to streamlining worker productivity in the last 18 months. Uh, another thing that I was looking at is, you know, the fact that we have so many different apps and we're constantly switching apps. Context is constantly changing. Is this sort of um, system of record going to allow or, or reduce the amount of context switching that employees have to do? Yeah, almost all of these announcements have some flavor to that saying, can we start bringing more systems together in one place? You're not switching between applications. You don't have different and disconnected sets of data uh, that if you need to, and if they are disconnected, you can you can connect them, right? That's what the app builder announcement again is about saying, all right, if you're always, always using these three applications to do something and you're switching between them, maybe you can just build something to connect them into one experience and you know a, a, a maybe a low-level IT person or even a business user can do that. That's the big trend right now. That's so important for that continued productivity as things will continue to be a little bit uh, unstable, I guess, for a while. One more thing that I saw that Citrix is announcing is integrations with Rike. I've been a, a Rike user myself. Um, I like to have program project management tools that I can utilize to keep track of projects, but they've done a, a number of, of integrations, one of them with Rike Signature, which I thought was really cool. So for a secure e-signature within, um, within Rike, based on a program or a project that you're working on, talk to me about some of the boosts to Rike that they've done and how you think that's going to be influential in the employee experience. Well, at first, let's just say that the, the, the Reich acquisition was a really important one for Citrix to go above uh, just the, the basic um, uh, digital workplace and simple systems of record. This is a really a mass collaboration tool for managing work itself. And so they're, they're, this is taking Citrix up the stack uh, in the more sophisticated work scenarios. That, uh, and and when you, we are in more sophisticated work scenarios, you want to be able to pull in uh, different uh, uh, different data sets. So you know they have the uh, Citrix share file support uh, you you want to be able to bring in really important things like uh, you know signing contracts or si signing sales deals uh, or mortgage applications or all sorts of exciting things that actually run your business and so right signature support is really important so that when you have key processes uh, that involve people putting signatures on documents you can just build um, collaborative work uh, management flows that uh, that take that all that into account without having to leave the experience everything's in one place as much as possible. And this is a, the, the big push thing. We, we need to have all these different systems. We don't have too many apps. What we have is, is too many touch points. Let's start combining some of these. And so the Reich integrations really help you do that. Well, and ultimately it seems like what Citrix is doing with the work launchpad series, all the announcements here is really helping workers to work how and where they want to work, which is very similar to what we say when we're talking about the end user customer experience, when when tech companies like Citrix say, we have to meet our customers where they are. It sounds like that's the same thing that's happening here. It, it is, and, and, and I would just add on top of that and to make it all safe. So you can bring all these systems together, work from anywhere, and then you, you can feel confident that you're going to do the so securely and safely. And it's that whole package, I think, that's really critical here. You're right, I'm glad you brought up that security. All right, Diane, take out your crystal ball for me as we wrap things up. You're saying, you know, going into the future, we're going to be moving from this distributed workforce to this hybrid. What are some of the things that you see as really critical happening in the next six to nine months? Well, there's a real push to say, um, we need to bring in all the workers that uh, we've hired over the last year, maybe not bring them in in person, but can we use these collaborative tools and technologies to bring them, hold them closer so they get to know us. And so, you know, uh, things like uh, having Microsoft Teams integrated right into your, your, your Citrix workspace makes it easier for you to collaborate with remote workers in, inside any process, wherever you are. So whether you're in the office or not, 
Um, it should bring workers closer, especially those remote ones that are at risk of being left out as we move to hybrid work. I think that's really important. Um, and so the, the things like the app builder are gonna also allow building those connections. And I think that workers and businesses are really gonna try and build those bridges uh, because the number one thing I'm hearing from uh, business leaders and IT leaders is, is that you know, we're worried about splitting into two different organizations, the, the ones that are remote and the ones that are in the office. And any way that we can bring all of them together in an easy way, in a natural way, situate the digital employee experience. So we really back, we're back to one company, one common culture, uh, everybody has uh, has equal access and equity um, to the employee experience. That's going to be really important. And I think that Centric's Launchpad announcements around work um, really are a step, a major step in the right direction for that. There's still more things that have to be done, and all all vendors are working on that. Um, but it's nice to see. I uh, really like what Centric is doing here uh, to move the ball forward uh, towards where we're all going. It is nice to see, and, and those connections are critically important. I happened to be at an in-person event last week, and several folks had just had, had been hired during the pandemic and just got to meet some of their teams. So in terms of, of getting that cultural alignment once again, this is a great step towards that. Diane, thank you for joining me on the program, talking about the Citrix Launchpad series for work, all the great new things that they're announcing and sharing with us some of the things that you see coming down the pike. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Lisa, for having me. For Diane Hinchcliffe, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation.